Welcome back to the OK Kite Border. In our last episode, we looked at points to consider when transitioning from an inflatable kite to a foil kite. So in this episode, let's take it one step further. Let's look at the Ozone Hyperlink versus the Fly Surfer Soul in a showdown. My attempt is to keep it as objective as possible. However, there will be some subjectivity sprinkled throughout from the perspective of an average OK Kite Border. My goal is to eliminate all of the unknowns with each kite before you make this large financial investment. I hope that you find this episode beneficial in choosing which foil kite would be best for you. This review will be split into two episodes and it is rather long, but I wanted to be as thorough as possible considering that you may be taking a large financial plunge into the world of foil kites. The criteria that I will use to judge are as follows. Aesthetics, setup, control system, launch and land, performance on a hydrofoil, and performance on a twin tip. Remember that this is from the perspective of an average OK kiteboarder. If you want to talk about how the Hyperlink performs better with the Jesus Walk or the Soul performs better on a 360 tack on a hydrofoil, I'm sorry, but that guy doesn't live here. He'd like to move here, but he's about 3,000 miles away across two oceans and he only has a tricycle for transportation. To begin, both kites were in the 12 meter version. The first thing you notice between the Soul and the Hyperlink is their aspect. The Soul is a high aspect kite, more of a conventional foil kite type of design. The Hyperlink is a beefier look, more of a traditional LEI shape. We will discuss later how these differences in shape come into play. The Hyperlink comes in the following sizes, 5, 7, 9, and 12. The Soul in a wide range of 6, 8, 10, 12, 15, 18, 21, 37, 49 meters. The color choices can be more customized with the Hyperlink, whereas the sole colors come based upon the size of the kite. The kite's materials are actually much different to touch. The Hyperlink has a durable cell cloth, which feels like a really soft parachute material, and the sole uses an X-Lite material, which feels more like an LEI canopy, and my initial thought is that it feels very durable. From an aesthetic standpoint, I would say that my preference is the lower aspect kite and also the ability to customize the color of the Hyperlink. Not a huge difference here in this category and it's all very subjective, but I would give the points to the Hyperlink under the category of aesthetics. The two kites come very different in their packaging. First of all, the Fly Surfer comes with a really nice carrying travel bag and the Hyperlink requires an extra purchase to have this option. However, through Green Hat Kiteboarding, if you purchase a Hyperlink, they will provide you with a compression bag for the Hyperlink. Yay! Believe it or not, these bridle systems, which look like your typical rat's nest, come apart pretty easily when spreading the kite out. It looks more intimidating than it actually is. Ozone states that they have designed a more minimal bridle system than their other foil kite models. And I would say Fly Surfer is comparable in design and ease. Okay, here's a big difference between the two kites. If you snow kite or land board, the Hyperlink is able to convert over to an open cell system. This allows the kite to lose a lot of its air whenever it's landed and increases safety in the environments on land. All you have to do is take the Velcro off of each air intake across the leading edge and unzip the zipper in each compartment. This will allow airflow to escape whenever you land the kite. The Hyperlink also has a five line launch relaunch depower system that's optional for snow kiting and for land boarding. The closed cell system allows for water relaunch and this technology has changed the game for the water foil kite. Both kites fall under the closed cell category. However, the Hyperlink is the only one that's able to be a hybrid and go from open to closed cell. The deflate valves serve the same purpose on each kite. For the sole has two small deflate pouches on the trailing edge of the kite that are pretty small. Whereas the Hyperlink has a single zipper centered on the back of the kite on the trailing edge. On land, I didn't notice much of a difference between the two in the escape of air out of the kite. I would assume that if you're in a really bad situation and you have a deep water self rescue, that you would prefer one centered large zipper with larger surface area so that you could escape the air out of the kite when trying to roll it up in the middle of the water with the self rescue. The fly surfer out of the bag was not tuned. The back lines had so much slack in them that even when the kite was fully powered, they still had slack. 
and this required an extra knot under the floaters to be created. I'm just happy I had some expert foil kiters with me that were able to modify this because honestly, this procedure was above my pay grade. On the other hand, the hyperlink came out of the bag. Yes, the transparent Ziploc minus the Ziploc bag, fully tuned and ready to go. Setup also goes to the hyperlink. Both systems, however, are simple in setup. I just wish that the Fly Surfer Soul would have come out of the bag fully tuned. I just wonder if less experienced foil kiters like myself go around with a kite that's not fully tuned and don't even realize it and aren't able to reach the full potential of the foil kite. Ozone and Fly Surfer provide multiple options for control bars. The ones that were tested in this demo were the Infinity 3.0, fly surfer control system and the foil race bar for the ozone. Ozone utilizes a click-in reload system for their chicken loop which can be very beneficial especially for one-handed reattachment of the chicken loop which you can see the benefit of when flagging out the kite or maybe when operating in cold weather and wearing gloves. The fly surfer bar includes the traditional chicken loop reattachment and the ozone hyperlink also provided a brake handle which the fly surfer did not. This aids in the solo backstall landing as well as the reverse launch off of the water. Both systems have line spinners to untangle kite loops. My preference for this goes towards the fly surfer sole because of its ease of use. The ozone bar overall, in my opinion, was much more comfortable while gripping. Bar pressure with the hyperlink was significantly more than with the sole, but I think this is in their design. For my personal preference is to have light bar pressure when operating a kite. Within the control system, because of the additional features that the Ozone offers, such as the click-in reload system, the braking strap, and the overall comfort of the bar, this category also goes to the Hyperlink. Both manufacturers have multiple options when it comes to depowering straps, so I didn't judge that aspect. If you think this showdown is going to be a landslide victory for the Ozone Hyperlink, think again. In the next episode, we're going to cover launch and landing and the most important aspects judging foil kite performance while hydrofoiling and while riding a twin tip. Mention the OK Kite Porter with your next order at greenhatkiteporting.com and we're going to hook you up with some free green hat swag. Thanks for that, Brian. I needed your help with that message considering that I have officially aged out of the ability to use that word. Swag. Please subscribe, like, and comment below and we'll see you next time on episode two of the Soul versus the Hyperlink Showdown.